and we murder Chris at the end. Uh, probably gonna murder Chris, but Connor's gonna die in a few minutes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll avenge your, we'll kill, we'll kill Chris in your honor. Do me a favor, kill Chris, but Alan has to do it. Okay. <laughs> oh wow, this is this is the end of the show, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is like trends. Two of us die, and one of us goes to jail for the rest of his life. So I mean, let's face it. Unless it's going to be the Hunter and uh, Arlen show, which could potentially happen. Yeah, it could this happen. is going to be yeah. the last episode. So yeah, for anyone who's going to listen to this, I got a mega cold from my work, and everybody has it, and no one's getting any better, and this is the result. Yeah. Apparently, you sound I like sound, an old man. I sound like an old man. Yeah, I sound fucking like Rick, Rick Sanchez over here. Biff from Back to the Future or something. <laughs> so we're going to start with Legion, which is the show I watched today. So did I. Yeah. I, I watched it too today, and it was yeah. pretty incredible. Like, uh, Chris, please get your thought out of the way that will probably yeah. just want to kill you. Okay, so I didn't see the pilot. I didn't. I wasn't part of the conversation when you guys did last week. I only saw it just yesterday, the first and second episode, which are all of them right so far? Yes. yes. Just two episodes? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I'm having trouble understanding what the fuck is happening in that whole show. Hey, That's the point. That's the point. I can explain it to you because it's... Cause I feel like because I understand one it on a weird level where the f- like what what's up with Aubrey Plaza? She's just like so. I have this washing machine. That's a thing. So it was a stove. So, <laughs> uh, oh, excuse me, a stove because that makes a difference. Chris, do you want me? Do you want me to explain? Yes, please. What in? No, I'm asked. This is. Do you want me to explain in the context of the comics? Or do you no, I understand the comic. Stuff? He's uh, schizophrenic. No, I get of Charles Xavier. With multiple personality disorder. Like, I mean, do you want me to explain what happened to Aubrey Plaza? Is what sure. I'm asking. So, he absorbed her. Okay. When when she died, when um, Sydney used his powers, with uh, since her powers is body swap, mm-hmm. she used his powers and it, it caused him to absorb Aubrey Plaza. Okay. Now, the stove, I believe, is how he takes his uh, psychiatric medication. Is he smoking it? Fascinating. Huh. Hence the frog with the bong hole. Yeah. yeah it's that's... basically a bong. Yeah. Uh, and this whole episode, thing. they keep on introducing new personalities. That, like, weird doll with King Dude who was in the book, that's another personality. Yes. Okay, I have, to, I, have, I, have a que- I have a question. Is Amy from... Is that the actress from the League... Mm, I don't know. I've never seen the league. Yeah, I haven't either. I don't know. She might be. This is this show is a lot of FX. No, I'm, not, I'm specifically asking Chris this because you think I actually read the comic before this? Because I sh- promise you, I did not. I'm talking about the TV show, the league. Oh, wait. What? The fantasy football show, Amy. Yeah. No. What's the question? The actress is plays, Amy. Isn't she on? Oh, she, she looks, I have no damn clue. God, I want to. I don't know actors right now. It's it's. So we're only one minute in. And so it begins. <laughs> we're only one minute in. I mean, Jesus it began fans. like thirty seconds ago, but yeah, he's he's letting it go now. Um, yeah, no, yeah. This uh, so I like the second episode a lot more than the first episode. Yeah, I have more um, questions. Yeah, this was like a psychological horror movie. It also. Yeah. Felt like it I have more questions. A little bit more. Yeah. Okay, Chris, give us one of your questions. Um, how does this interact, as it were, to the X Men universe? It, Not the TV universe, but like in happens. in a majority. Like, it's too early. Is there a Charles Xavier? Is there a? So I well, think any, there is. Can I, can I tell you my theory based on that? Okay, the yellow thing that keeps showing up. Yes. That is a personality called the Fiend, which also takes the form of Charles Xavier in the comic books. Mm. So I'm assuming they're going to reveal that who his dad is at some point in this show. So this either takes place before X Men or after.
after the X-Men are uh, established. Yeah, because the l- awesome. little like, part with the little bedroom story time thing kind of threw me off, because I'm like, the fuck? Yeah. I, well, think- I think that was deliberately misleading, but I also think it's too early to tell where this will kind of open yeah. up at. It's just that, that personality, me knowing like the context of it, makes me think they're, that it is for sure going to be Xavier. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting. I don't think he actually. I don't think Xavier knows that he exists. If he does exist in this universe, um, in the comics, isn't he basically an illegitimate child? Yes, he's so, the yeah. son of Xavier and uh, is Israeli ambassador. So yeah, it would make sense that his his existence would be hidden. Yeah. Also, that 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 woman that visits him in the first episode—that's his sister. Yeah, Amy. Yeah. Like, it, I didn't put that together till this episode for some yeah, reason. Yeah, for some reason I thought it was his mom or something. Yeah, she looks almost... Yeah, because like, I, I thought, like, in a, a flashback or some nonsense type deal, like Arrow style, it was, like, his mom and then him, because I remember seeing her at, like, I would assume a grown-up age, yeah. and then a child. It's implied that his, both of his, like, parents are dead. Well, at least Xavier... If he is his dad, it's still probably still alive. But it implies at least his mom and his adopted dad, or whatever, is dead. Yeah, that, that's definitely not his biological dad. Yeah, it's definitely not. That's my guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> Potomi, I during the fe- first episode, I was like, what was his power? Because he just had a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, is his power a machine gun? <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of amusing, because, like, the one dude is, like, picking up humans and rocks and hurling them all over the place, which is, which was, I didn't mention it last week, but, like, it was so jarring to have this whole show and the pilot kind of, like, lead you along and confuse you, and then it blows open with this tonal shift of, like, telekinetic powers on display and machine gun fire, and I yes. think it works in the show's favor because the show is going in, in so many different directions on purpose so as to mislead you. Yes. It's, um, very... It's very interesting to watch. Like, I, like it's, it has my attention. Like, I'm going to be it's, very sad. It is, it is dripping. It's dripping with artistic integrity, and that's what I really like about it. It's not. Yes. It's not typical comic book affair. This is something that's very unique. Yeah, it's very. It's not by the books at all. No. Yeah, I, I, which I really enjoy, and especially since I just found out that they're making an X Men TV series, which is what I originally wanted. So. Yeah, really. the only difference is so. An X Men series in addition to Legion. Well, the X Men series is being that's being worked on by uh, Brian Singer. This is yep. no, uh, Noah Hawley. Mm. Yes. Also, they're making a Hellfire Club show, which also sounds interesting. I'd watch that. Yeah, I think that one's going to be on Fox along with yes, the okay. uh, X Men show. Yes. So they're building a TV universe, and so far, like. This is pretty strong. Like if if they follow sweet suit, we'll I think I think if this and Logan are the direction they want to take this property, I'm okay with that. Yes, it's, I'm on board completely. Like this is making me want to get back into. Action. You want to do something with this property other than making like just one of the mill superhero movies and fine, do it. I'm totally behind it. Yeah. Um, but this, like I said, this is like a psychological horror episode. This for for a show, it's not typically a horror show it is downright creepy yes yeah yeah it, it, there are it, moments very where creepy. Are, are very unsettling um yeah i was listening to the i fanboy special edition on the pilot and they described it as basically coen brothers meets x-men uh, yeah. yeah it has that yeah no it has that weird uh, like kind of uh i guess you call it quirkiness of like artsy uh, like yeah, like art, like yeah. high, like high, high end quirkiness where it's like it's very intelligent, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the the Coen Brothers thing is right on because Noah Hawley has spent twenty hours perfecting that skill. Yeah, exactly. So it it works perfectly. But someone last week said there's a bit of a Wes Anderson vibe to it, and there is because yeah, that's shot, what I was gonna say. That dancing. Color- that is the most Wes Anderson thing I've seen out All the color movies. palettes that I saw were like Wes Anderson. Yeah. The yeah. yellows, the oranges. Yep. The only thing missing was Bill Murray. <laughs> hey, don't I mean, count. We're only in episode two. Don't count him out yet. It's only episode two. 
You could show up. I mean, oh my god, what if he played plays Xavier? Oh god, <laughs> with a bald wig, like a bald cap. Uh, guys, have you have you seen him? He's basically bald. I mean, yeah, but, but I still want him to wear the ball ball cap. Uh, okay, so my I'm just gonna do this real quick so you guys can get going. Uh, I loved Legion episode two. I'm kind of really excited to see where this is going. Um, and it's got me the most curious out of all the stuff on TV. On that note, I'm I'm departing so I can go crawl into my bed and die. Get better. Smart. And yeah, right, hopefully. better, thanks. brother. Remember, right. remember, we're gonna beat up Chris for you later. So I I no. I can't wait no. to hear the audio. Oh yeah, no, it'll be great. Awesome. All right, goodbye, everybody. All right, get some rest, bud. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Um. Yeah. So to continue our Legion, our, our Legion talk, um, I really like this episode. I feel like it's, I feel like it's easier to grasp than the first episode because I think the first episode throws you into the deep end, um, and it doesn't, it uh, it doesn't really give you time to breathe. It's sort of just, just like, oh, here's all this stuff, and either take it or leave it. Yeah. And we're super fanboys, so we're just gonna. <laughs> We would take it for three episodes and be completely fine. We'd um, take it for a whole season, probably. Yeah. Just right in the behind. So, yep. So th- this one definitely like um, helped. I think it it gave us sort of a grounding, gave us a, a little floaty, a little, you know what I mean, the little floaty tube, so we could we could get our breath. Um, and I really liked it. It sort of set up some rules and established what the concepts are of this X-Men universe. We know that there are people who are running. We know that there's this thing called Division 3. Um, the which I? I don't know if that's... Yeah. Are they related to Rev 3? I don't know if that's 3? a pre-existing thing. May, hey, you never know. Tara Strong, she might be doing all kinds of weird stuff. For Tara, is that her name? I, I don't remember. Um, yeah. Tara there's Strong, lots of... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's, I do like that they sort of defined it, and they definitely set up the multiple personality things thing more in this episode. Yeah. Um, and I think the best example of that is when they're going through his memories, and uh, they talk about there being a time jump, which I feel like is the biggest indication that there are multiple personalities at work that we've had so far. Because why would there be a time jump? Well, somebody else had the wheel. That's why. Somebody else took control for a couple of seconds, and he only remembers when he was in the driver's seat. Oh, um, uh, something we didn't that we weren't sure about. It is connected to the X Men movies. Wait, it is Legion. Yeah. How? I just, oh, I'm, on yeah. The, I'm on the wiki for it. Um. <laughs> Some sort of nonsense, timey wimey thing, maybe with like Days of Future Past. Okay, the wiki is gonna assume that it is connected until they make something that establishes it isn't. Yeah. So until we see Professor X and he's not Patrick Stewart and he's not James yeah. McAvoy, and wiki people will assume. Yeah. Um. I, I, this is I, just how wikis work, though. I kind of hope that it's not connected to the movies. Yeah, like, does I, I feel like I feel like Fox's handling of the X Men hasn't been the greatest, yeah. and it and it seems like they're like taking a step back and saying, okay, let's see if we can let's see if we can do what's best for us, and I think that for them that means expanding and not just like trying to make one universe, because that not everybody can do that successfully at all <laughs> like you can try to copy Marvel all you want but if you fail repeatedly maybe you should stop while you're ahead and reevaluate and it seems like Fox is doing that um, which I'm fine with and this is a really good example of what happens when you do stop and reevaluate and stop trying to connect everything um, which is what they seem like they were trying to do like they were trying to set up like Oh, every movie's gonna lead into the next one, and they're gonna be really, you know, establishy, establishing 
stuff and blah 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 blah. Every movie is going to be dependent on seeing the last one. They threw that out, it seems. Um, and this show feels very independent of anything else X Men, which I'm fine with. The only thing I'm mad about, or that the only thing I don't like about this series, is that it's only that the season only has four more episodes. Yeah, it's a very short season, apparently. It sucks, but I, you know what? They're doing the British thing. Yeah, mm. it's, you know what? It, it's good, so it's hard to complain. Right. But Although I don't know about that four-episode thing. That doesn't sound right, but... No, no, there's uh, six chapters in, the, in this season. <clears throat> or that are listed right now. Yeah, that might just be what's listed. Because I, I, I know why you bought it on iTunes, so you might well, not be wrong. First, but... I watched the first episode on Amazon and then, uh, oh. then got the season pass on iTunes. Yeah. Yeah, because I bought it on Google, and what I was looking at said 10. So, I don't know. I mean, it's possible. I... It's... But... The show is really good, regardless. It's just, I can't get over how good it is. Because um, it could have been could have been bad. There was The possibility was there. Um, I'm really glad I wasn't, though. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah. I don't know. Does anybody have any, like, other things? Chris, do you have any other... Yeah, like, I stuff don't... That we have to... Like, I'm trying... I tried to watch the show, and, like, after the first episode, I was like, what the fuck just happened? Second episode, I'm still just so confused as to, like, what exactly is happening with the show. So, hopefully, I can get some answers with the next four episodes. But, like, right now, like, I'm not really, like, totally devout to Legion, because I just am not grasping, I guess, the concept, or whatever trend they're trying to show. It's just not connecting with me. So... Mm. Okay, I, I've I've heard that from a lot of people. I don't think you're alone in that, and I do think it's an example of needing to see the whole thing, like needing to watch from beginning to end. Um, like, it just feels like I'm just like the plot just is not like consistent, but I think that's on purpose. No, it's because yeah. that's how they made it. So like. I don't know how to, like, explain, like, exactly, like, how do I so enjoy the show? Like, I love the X-Men, like, some of the best, like, some of my favorite comics and, like, artwork are from X-Men, of course. Yeah, no, So, it, it's seeing like, something, like, I can't grasp is weird. So, basically, yeah. how you watch this show is it's a roller coaster, basically. <laughs> like... Yeah. It's kind of like, you don't think about it too much. I'm watching it, and then it feels like I blank out like the character does for a second. Because I'm like, well, wait, what the, what, how did you get here? Like, it just, I don't know. Which is understandable. I I, I completely understand that, yeah. Because it does take you a couple seconds when it switches from scene to scene to know where you are. And they don't hold your hand. Um no. Like they don't throw out a piece of dialogue that tells you. Well, I mean, you what's should at least have a on. transition or something. You don't just like miss half the plot. Yeah, that's not. This is the that's not how. Shows. Okay. Yeah, that's not how they're doing it. They're kind of like expecting you to just pay attention. I guess I don't know. I'm fine with my, it because I watch I watch my, weird shit all the time. So uh, if you guys I don't, know. don't mind me uh, saying this. At New York Comic Con 2016, Lauren Schuler Donner said that the series is far from the X Men movies, but still lives in the universe. Yeah, but they okay, so they've gone back and forth on that. That's the problem. They've said that, and then they've said no, it isn't. So uh, well, I don't. Know. <laughs> and um, they, they don't. Yeah, I don't I don't believe her for a second. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't like Lauren Schuler Donner personally, just based off of what I've some of the things I've heard. Um and I don't trust her for a second when it comes to statements about the X Men universe. 
because she has said things, and then like six months later, the exact opposite has been true. Um, so you can't trust anything Lauren Schuller Donner says when it comes to the X Men franchise, um, because she's usually lying uh, almost one hundred percent of the time. In the same way that Pablo Hidalgo lies about Star Wars stuff all the time, um, so and yeah. uh, Jeff Lo- I think other no Jeff Loeb said that his involvement in the show is a sign that bridges are being made between Marvel and Fox. Yeah, because I don't know how they came to a deal, but they weren't supposed to have the rights to do a TV show. Um, which makes me think that there was some sort of trade going on that we don't know about, because they. they I mean, they we've heard some rumors us. of uh, a certain uh, X Men uh, person uh, coming back to Marvel. So maybe, maybe. named uh, King of the Sea. And it, oh no, no, no! He's Universal. Oh, he's not an X Men character. No, he was. No. He's X Men. No, he's a mutant, but he's not X Men. He oh, is owned by Universal. Are we going to Namor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, he's owned by Universal. Wait. He's because he's older than the X Men. He technically predates mutants. He um. He's the first. He mutant. was. Yeah. yeah. He's owned he was, by Universal. I thought he was in the package with the uh, X Men. No, I don't know how, but he was. If anything, he he'd was be in the package the, with. Uh, he'd be in the package with Fantastic Four. Yeah. You would think so, but he was sold with Hulk. Was he really? He was, yeah. He was sold in the same deal as Hulk. Um, so I wonder so, if that means that his rights are back. Technically, they yeah, are. Yeah, if Marvel wanted to use, time. So, like, if if Marvel wanted to do a solo Namor movie, they would have to co-produce it with Universal. Um, if same if they want to do a solo Hulk movie again. Universal would have a producing credit, and yeah. they would have a has, say in the movie. Has Universal been good lately, though? Because that all kind of depends if, like, they have the cash flow to, like, say, "Hey, we're going to make a superhero movie finally that we've been like I mean, had forever." They they make the Fast and the Furious movies, so they make superhero movies already. <laughs> No, what happens is Marvel says, okay, we can't do a solo Hulk movie, so what What can we do? Oh, um, we know that people love the way Thor and Hulk fought in the Avengers and the, their interactions in Avengers 2. What if we put Hulk in Thor 2 or Thor 3? Okay, like, what if we put him in that movie? Um, people and, like want, for whatever reason, they're like, oh my gosh, I want a new Hulk movie. And I'm like, Why? Yeah, he, he works best no when, he's, when he's a supporting character. Yeah, he's yeah. not a he. He can't stand on his own. He doesn't have like enough. Yeah, that's why like, he makes so much sense in Thor. And so Kirkham. much sense. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, going back to uh, Legion, the ratings are not good. Not that good for, right now. What? Yeah, yeah. For the that's first episode, Fx doesn't care though. Chap- uh, uh, episode one got one point six million viewers. And it dropped mm. to 1.1. What does it actually air on? Uh, for FX and cable, that's actually really good. Yeah, but what day does it air on? Wednesdays. It airs on Wednesdays. Wednesdays at like 8 o'clock? No, 10. No, Wednesdays at 10. Oh, 10. Oh, that's even past yeah, for, prime time. Wednesdays at, yeah, for Wednesdays at 10, that's great. Um, cable, cable shows don't do multi-millions, ever. Uh, if you're, unless you're The Walking Dead... Uh, or Game of Thrones, you don't get multi-millions in the ratings. That just is doesn't happen. HBO even considered cable anymore? It is. It's still considered cable, and the ratings are usually more comparable. Is, isn't it a subscription service now? Yeah, it's premium cable, but it's still cable. Well, I'm just saying that American Crime Story, Fargo, they had higher ratings when they debuted? Yeah. This is, for FX, this is not typical, that's true. But for cable networks, this is very typical. But I didn't, I don't think they ever expected this to have Mr. Robot level ratings. They never expect, again, they didn't expect Walking Dead level ratings. 
uh, like just from watching the first episode, you realize that because even the marketing in this show, they did not know how to market this thing. <laughs> we were talking about the trailers for this and being like, "Wait, what? What? What is this? This is so weird." And it, it is. It I mean, the show is exactly like the trailer. It's weird and don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I can understand if this show got a million, which is fine. If you tell me that this show is getting a third or a quarter of a million, it would be canceled already. They would have announced that there was no second season last week, and that they were just going to let the rest of the show air. Uh, or they would have even like tried doubling it up or something, just to see if they could get it out as fast as they could. But they clearly have a confidence in the show, and they're fine with being in the millions again it's FX and I think their number one show is The Americans which I've personally never seen but apparently it was at least interesting enough to have like three seasons now that's their critical darling um I think that their biggest ratings ever were The Shield and Sons of Anarchy and The Simpsons Marathon they had for like a week yeah I mean, Always so, Sunny does kind of well, too, right? It's yeah. not because it had, yeah. been like... Been Archer like, does crazy oh, ratings. Oh, yeah, huh? I forgot about Archer. Um, but most of their shows aren't, like, giant ratings hits. Most of their shows are critical hits. Um, South Park and is they just, with Comedy Central, not FX, right? Yeah. But yeah, Fargo was a critical hit, and it did well enough in the ratings that they kept it on air. But they care more about critical ratings than they do actual, or yeah, critical response than they do actual ratings. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think I don't know. Does anybody have any like last final thoughts on Legion? Really, I mean, I think we the saw it. Episode, it. Excited for episode three. I'm definitely going to be pushing yeah. this show a lot, people. I love. I'm going to be hoping yeah. that I can understand it by the next episode. You know, I love so. the soundtrack to this show, or like the music for the show. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. It's so perfect because every scene, every scene, the music fits fits so well for what is trying, what is happening in that scene. Um, in the scenes where it needs to be tense, it almost feels like an '80s psychological thriller in other scenes where it needs to be non-existent and light it's you don't notice it unless you're really looking for it and in other places they'll have weird needle drops that are just incredibly beautiful and well 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 done against what is being presented visually um so yeah it's funny, uh, i love them considering he was created in the 80s yeah Wait, the actual, like, Legion was 80s? Yeah, he was New Moons 25 in 1985. All right. Also, one last thing. You're not... It's not... Even though he's son of Xavier... He hasn't been seen since... The last time he was seen was in the final issue of X-Men Legacy. Yeah. When he uh, erased himself from existence. Whoa. Yeah, Yeah. he, he, he basically just kind of, like, melted away. <laughs> there is still an aspect of him living in Blindfold's mind, though. Wasn't yeah. Marvel uh, trying to, like, get rid of the ex- no, that's Fantastic Four. Never mind. I mean, yeah, but hashtag they've been fuck trying I. To do- <laughs> they've been trying to do the same thing with the X Men, but the X Men are more popular than the Fantastic Four. Yeah, you can't. So it's harder to do. <laughs> it's much harder to do. <laughs> if the Fantastic Four were the most popular comic selling, then they couldn't have actually succeeded in getting rid of them. But nobody cares about the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Except for Doctor Doom. Everybody loves Doctor Doom. Yes. Um, He's the best. Okay, I think we can move on. 
Um, I feel like we should talk about Arrow this week. We didn't really talk about it off air. Oh my god, I love um, that this week, this episode of Arrow. Well, I didn't really watch, but Arrow was too real for me this week. I I agree, but that's kind of what I liked about it. It was like it was very Star Trekky. Um, I wouldn't even go that far. I would say it's like straight up like what would be the term, Mister Robot. Well, yeah, but Mr. Robot is, it has a message, but it's not, like... Well, I mean, this <laughs> one did kind of, too, like... Yeah, but no, this is different. This is much more like, oh, this is an issue that we need to change, and it's a single episode, and we're going to tell you, you how to deal with it or how we think you should deal with it, which is what Star Trek used to do. They used to just say, this is an anti-war episode. We're going to tell you... Everything wrong with war, we're going to present both sides of war, and we're going to show you how you should not be for war. Um, which is really missing, important when... There's only one thing missing from this episode. Yeah? Peter Capaldi, his speech from Saigon and Virgin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God damn you. That would have been cool. No, I really enjoyed the episode because for a good five minutes or so, I thought that uh, they killed the uh, assistant DA, a.k.a. Vigilante. So I was really excited. Sorry, Hunter. No. no. I was like, I was like, yes, they killed him before he got his skis. And, no. and then like five minutes later, he actually shows up and I'm like, fuck. No, <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Hunter, you haven't seen this episode? I just was, I, that just clicked with me. Yeah, I didn't see it. Okay, Hunter. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't have okay. a whole lot of time anymore. No, I understand that. I understand that. I, so I completely I have, understand. I have to skip. Okay, but on a show, <laughs> on a night where we only have three shows to cover, and one of them was a fill-in. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Um, I did, I did wait, no, it. wasn't it just two? Because it was just Arrow and Well, yeah, Supergirl. Legion was a fill-in. We weren't going to do Legion. We wouldn't have done it this week. All you had to but... watch was really Arrow and Supergirl. I did watch. Oh, I didn't watch Arrow. But yeah. I watched Supergirl. Okay, Hunter. I'll talk. I'm going to I'm gonna talk expo- expenary, uh, whatever, about Arrow. Okay, so a couple things I want to bring up. Well, first you need know, to um, take Hunter behind the dumpster in the back that you always take me to and just start just pounding on him. No, no. I that's the only thing that's fair, right? I'm going to take his glasses and I'm going to put him in the garbage disposal. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do that. I, I honestly feel bad for Con- uh, Connor right now because a few days ago he was like, I just really want to talk about TJ Maxx snake eyes. <laughs> TJ <laughs> Maxx, the clothing store? Yeah, TJ Maxx yeah, Snake no, Eyes. No, you're making fun of me because I like the vigilante. <laughs> oh. Well, Walmart, I, I Deadpool. Like vigilante. Okay. Swap so meat Punisher. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll make those jokes when Vigilante shows up again. Um, okay, so... Uh, there's one more Early left. on... God damn it. Early Sen- on Sen- in this show... Senior Tuesday death joke. Okay. I think it actually yeah, airs on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, it does. That was, that's just what Connor wrote. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So early on in this show, and even uh, even as recently as when we were starting this podcast, uh, there were people who were claiming that Stephen Amell cannot act. Um, uh, my only proof against that Nine is out of this ten. episode. Nine out of ten times, yes. Are you saying 9 out of 10 times he can or can't? 9 out of 10 episodes he can't act. I disagree completely. 9 I out think of 10 it's episodes, become... sir. I think he's shown that he has, like, improved. I think in the first season he couldn't act that so well. So what you're saying is he's taking he acting like... classes? I think he has. <laughs> well, no, I think he's the just WWE watching The WWE did not Flash. prepare him for it? He's just watching The Flash. That's what happened. There's what's a certain. Happening. There's an episode. He's from... watching. He's just hanging around Grant Gustin all the time, just asking for pointers. Yeah. 
There's an episode. And Grant goes, hey, uh, you got any more of them uh, acting tips? <laughs> Scratch yeah. his neck. <laughs> yeah, in his uh, uh, Casey Jones accent, he's just asking for tips. Um, the episode last no, season episode shows with uh, Constantine. Con- okay, fucking Constantine, God, fucking damn it. I'm, not, I'm never going to go away from this. I'm going to keep calling yeah, it Constantine. We're just- Man, me, me, Alan, and Chris are all getting beat down tonight. <laughs> I will I was gonna be exhausted. Just kick our ass. No one is safe. But in that episode, okay. there's there's scene, a scene with him and Conklin. Right. And he just it's uh Hunter, remember when he was when Stephen Amell was on uh Raw? Yes. The way he was talking about he does. make the match. That way that tone? Yeah. He used that tone in the in the flashbacks to the to Lee and you with he, that that Speaking sort of, of flashbacks while it's still fresh in my mind, this was the first episode that we didn't see an arrow flashback. We saw a Renee flashback. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was really it was good. Nice. We got, it was nice. We could have Yeah. We could have used the Renee flashback a couple of episodes earlier, though, because I haven't really cared about his character that much this season. He's kind of been throwaway. Um, so this would have been nice earlier. This episode, like, actually brought some backstory to Renee. Yeah. Okay, wow, was, for those of you that yeah. Don't know yeah, and it really helped. Um, and also shows how they're going to phase out his character or how they, or if they don't <laughs> kill him. Uh, he'll he'll get killed by probably vigilante because there's a because Curtis comes up goes over to him and says, "I think I know a lawyer. Let's get your daughter back." Like I said, I think either vigilante is going to kill him. I don't think Prometheus is going to kill him. I mean, that's like the likely suspect, but I mean, I think it'll actually be vigilante, and then. Stephen Mel will be like, oh, sad face. Yeah, and then Vigilante will have his own show. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. no. Hunter, as long as I am on this podcast, I will not be a part of any sort of nonsense of hyping up the stupidest character to be on Arrow. He's not that stupid. <laughs> kind of uh, is. He's wearing ski goggles, sir. Yeah, no, You're forgetting just, the, the vigilante. He really likes sports, all right? <laughs> Leave him alone. You're forgetting the vigilante that was on Supergirl, Mike. He was even dumber. That that vigilante was stupider. Yeah, he looked. He had that stupid backpack. Anyways. Okay. Um. What was I going to say? Um, okay. This no, episode was a, awesome because is, it featured the return of Samara Armstrong for Anna from the OC. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good, uh, got a lot of good actors in this episode. And the funny thing is that on the OC, she was a comic nerd. Wow. Real, real, real diverse range there. Um, yeah, I thought the, I really thought the performances were the, th- thing that made this episode exceptional um because these cw shows don't always have good performances i think the show that you would say that the most about is probably flash usually recently recently yes but like consistency wise like when you think of good performances you think of jesse l martin you think of tom cavanaugh uh you think of grand gustin in this whole multiverse that we got going. You know, and maybe you think of um Calista Flockhart on Supergirl. You know, and maybe on Arrow you think of um Manu Bennett. But I'll it's tell you who you don't think like about one off. Ciara Renee. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think about like most of the supporting characters of the show. Like I thought um Dia. I th- thought Mr. Terrific was doing well. I thought he was doing really, really well. For a while, um, yeah. Diggle was just doing what Diggle does. I um, have no idea, like what Diggle's been doing the past couple episodes. I'm like, Are you okay, like mentally? Because you don't seem okay. <laughs> yeah, he's been kind of, 
He's been kind of a edge, he has more bullets kind of edge than because he's been like he's good for a good like half of the episode, but three minutes out of the episode, he just loses it, and I'm like, yeah, you okay, bro? He kind of goes a you little bit crazy. I think he's a uh, he's taking testosterone probably. If I had to guess, uh, maybe because. Uh, um, like, because it's like kind of out of the blue, though. Like it doesn't ever have a trigger to it. I don't know if that's a writing or acting choice, but I feel like it's a writing choice. Because um, he's acting his ass off, um, so it definitely feels like a forced writing choice. Um, we got Thea back in this episode. Um, she didn't really do much, so I guess that wasn't that exciting. Um, she. But it kind of showed to me that we maybe don't need her anymore. Uh, I think we'd be fine if she kind of left the show. What happened to that whole like storyline of the bloodlust? I don't know. Like I, I said, I, Diggle has more bloodlust than Thea. Yeah. I guess she retired, so she doesn't have bloodlust anymore. It doesn't quite make sense, yeah. but... Considering that whatever. was a strong plot line for half a season. Yeah. I no, no, um, I like, I like the, the Dinah Drake and Diggle story. story oh my god, yeah. dude. Like, as soon as I heard, like, Dinah Drake for, like, the third time or something like that, all of a sudden my mind flipped to Todd Drake of uh, Batman, of course. And I was like... Or no, wait. No, not Todd Drake. Uh, Jason, Tim Drake. Tim Drake. That's it. I was mixing Jason Todd and Tim Drake. Yeah. So my mind switched to Tim Drake, and I'm like... Oh my god, what if she, like, is secretly, like, part of uh, Prometheus's whole deal? And, like... Oh, I really hope not. I really, really hope not. I would... You know how I talked about leaving the show after the whole fake Laurel reveal? reveal? I would stop watching the show if Dinah was revealed to be a bad guy. Um, One hundred. <laughs> Pull up like yeah, that, that, Terra and Teen Titans. Yeah, n- not not into that. Um, yeah, I I can really only just praise some of the performances. Uh, I really do like the scene with Vigilante because <laughs> he just comes in and he just fucks up all of her shit. <laughs> just like in the what the Heroes versus Aliens crossover, Flash comes in and just gets all of her out of the way. When, in a, just a random battle with Vigilante. Mm-hmm. And I just... <laughs> and I like his line. <laughs> We're the same. I just have a much better weapon. <laughs> it's <laughs> delivered like such a... He's like a DTV movie villain. <laughs> and it's so great. Um, God, I love it. Love it so much, um, and it's just—it's so obvious that Adrian is vigilante. I feel like everybody should be able to realize that. Like he almost turns into full vigilante in that hospital room. Um, just the way that he sounds is just like one step away from vigilante. I, I'm really surprised Oliver hasn't just figured it out, but whatever. Comics. <laughs> um. Yeah. Let me see. There are times in this episode where it does feel a little heavy-handed, um, mo- but most of the time I do feel like it rides that line between just hitting us over the head with a message and respecting both sides of the issue. Um, and again, it doesn't it doesn't paint any side as like the bad guy, um, even when the councilwoman is negotiating with Oliver. She has, like, legitimate points. Like, there's a real debate going on in this episode, and they don't give it to either side, and I really respected that. And um, and the episode in general makes uh, an argument for respectful arguments, which I really enjoyed. You know, when Curtis says, no, but we should be having this conversation. We used to have arguments with each other. We used Since to have when did it become in politic, in politic? Right. To, to talk about to, politics. To talk about politics. Yeah. Like, and that was really good. Like, yeah. We should be able to have differences of opinion and respect each other. And be that, able to walk away with it without, without starting a huge fight over a simple yeah. thing like calling a, a person by the actual 
given name who everyone can say correctly except you called Constantine, damn it. Or it's about not understanding <laughs> Legion. Exactly. Or so anything else you said on this sh- show publicly. We should be able to get over that and not dwell on that and argue uh, with uh, someone. I don't think we're going to get over it anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. 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 The retribution is coming. Yeah, LXG, July. <laughs> Judgment Day. Wait, it's July? I thought it was, I thought it was May. Uh, it's either July or August. I can't remember. I really yeah, when we can't. all decide to merge. July. Well, let me think. February, April, June. G- it's probably June. Oh, June, June or August. Because okay. it was yeah. July, I would say Judgment Day. July, we're going to have day. a lot of other stuff. June and July and August are going to be very busy for us when it comes to movie specials. In, in case of, for just a reminder for those of you that weren't really listening, you just kind of had background noise, yes, we're going to finally do a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen special, what I've been begging for since episode, before we actually even started doing the podcast, I was asking for it. Yeah. Yep. The day yep. is coming. I feel like we should have built the- up to it and... Waited and you know had hey, there's, time, like, you a, still have to wait a five. good what three months now. I mean yeah. that's a, that's enough time to build up. Yeah, I mean I can't I wait to talk about on how great um, Captain Nemo's ship is. Actually, I mean, that's gonna be like the whole show. His the design of his ship is cool. I will give you that. I I'll be surprised if I rewatch it and I actually like it. Um, that, that that'd be fun for me actually. <laughs> that'd be fun. <laughs> Just, like, everything and no, changed. for me to be the only one that likes it. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm the bad guy. Um, I, I would mean, like I'll, that. I'll hold off for the most part, but I mean, like, it's actually a good movie. Like, I'm, I'm not being right. sarcastic this time. Like, you can actually enjoy this movie. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> They're like, right. okay, I, you've had enough talk. Let's move on to the next topic. I I I feel like we've talked enough about Arrow because I don't have any other major points. Hunter can't say anything because he didn't see the show. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good job, Hunter. Good job. Um, it's the almost death of your favorite character on the show. So let's move on to Supergirl. Um, yeah. Can we talk about the ending first, or do we have to go through the whole thing? Because I really want to talk about the ending because I'm not happy with the way that they chose to do it. Oh, not happy with something on Arrow? Perish the thought. That never no, 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 no. Supergirl. I'm always unhappy with Arrow. Yeah. Oh, Supergirl? Okay. <laughs> what, what part? Well, no, we can talk about the ending first. What part were you. <laughs> what part were you not a fan of? Is it the next uh, pedal? <laughs> oh, oh, that's what bothered you? Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I was against that when they Nixle announced. Slick. I, I hate that character though. So, yeah, but I mean, like, I, I didn't like on how they, they, they chose to say it because I, 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 I I've always believed said. that it was called Mixelplick, not Metzelpedalic. Yeah, I read but... something earlier that made me yeah. laugh. It was like, finally, Mister Mixelplick is finally fuckable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? in what context? It's the CW. <laughs> like, why? Why is he handsome? I don't get it. I mean, why? What? Like, because why it's the CW. It's the CW. All they have is a room full of very handsome actors who they rotate in and out. <laughs> You, you're handsome. Can you say five lines convincingly? Yes, yes, I can. Remember when they did and them then they on Smallville? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't like the mental political stuff. No, in the chat, I thought you were talking about the stuff with Lena at the end, which I really I mean, didn't like. Um, I mean, I didn't, wasn't a fan of that earlier, but I mean, like, just to end on that note, because I just cannot stand the way that they chose to say his name. I mean, it sure. It bothers me. Mixels, I'm just against like the character in general. Well, yeah, I, think I don't just... really care for him. I think he's kind of a waste. But... Yeah. Because he's the mean... great... He's the, what is it? Great Kazoo from uh, Flintstones, yeah, basically. Great kazoo. I just noticed that. <laughs> like, <laughs> identical. Yeah. Also, the his introduction in the Flintstones comic, so much better than the show. That's not hard, because that comic, from what I've heard, is solid as hell. I've read every single issue and it's so good. Well, we got a pass over here. You can read comics. You can read. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's actually talk about the show proper. That's the I'm gonna call that the um, the epilogue and 
the epilogue isn't the real show. Um, but no, um, let's talk about, I guess, Lena and Supergirl. Because I'm having a problem. Okay. Since when are they such good friends? Yeah, I was wondering this too. Like, if if we had seen an episode where they like went out to drink casually, like the end of that, uh, like the end of the invasion episode, um, where like it was very clear that these two are friends and they hang out a lot, I would get it. But they've done nothing to set that up. It's just suddenly they're friends, and Supergirl knows that you have to trust her, or whatever. Like, oh, I'm, I am know, I know that I have to trust her, because she's shown me that she's a good person, somehow. Even though the last time we see her, she double-crosses everyone. Um, and you think that she's turned bad for half of the episode. So this this episode didn't make sense to me at all. It feels um, like they're. It really does feel like they're trying to do what they did with uh, Smallville. Yeah, with uh, Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah, and they're trying to like do it speedily because they didn't set it up in season one. Like, you know, you I know what, I bet they so should what have. Remind me of what? It, it remind me of those endings of Scrubs when they all would end up at the bar. Oh. And yeah, people there like who. Did not seem like they were friends at all. Like, it just yeah. didn't feel right. Oh, like yeah. uh, Dr. Cox's son friendship with the janitor? Yeah. You know what also weird, didn't like, feel right? Is the fact that there was no Flash or uh, Legends, because I was really looking forward to some Gorilla City. And then yeah. I asked you guys, and you're like, no, there's no Arrow or Legends this week. And I'm like, but Gorilla City? Yeah, I know. <laughs> It bothered me too. I, I thought it was this week. Um, oh, wait, now I read your I read your uh, your Solovar thing on the Haro, and thank you for the shadow. We don't need any more fucking plugs in the show. We almost went a whole episode without it. <laughs> You're all to bring up that was funny. Yeah, so many weird things in this episode. Um, no one needs to go to the Haro just for your information. Just stay and subscribe to this podcast because it's the only thing that actually matters. Shut up, Chris. Um, I'm telling yeah, the truth. It, it is yeah, the only thing that actually that matters is this yeah. podcast. Um, the three of us will fucking I, stab you. I re you guys I already re- have multiple times today, and we'll keep I doing it. I post this podcast on my site, jackass. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> so That's shut true. the fuck up. Again, why don't we <laughs> just Chris. post to iTunes like a normal person? We do post to iTunes, but we have to have a website for the RSS feed. Site? Okay. Just stop talking, please. I, <laughs> I mean, I know... It's called a repost. When you're on WordPress, you can repost other... Okay, we're not having this conversation on air. God fucking damn it. You know what's also called a repost? Taking the uh, storyline from uh, Smallville and putting it into Supergirl? Oh, yeah, no, it is. It's it's very blatant. Um, and Back I'm not a fan now. of it. Although they're kind of okay, so that end chess scene really bothered me because they're just giving away that she's going to turn bad. Um, I would rather that she didn't actually turn bad um, at all. I would prefer that she just stayed a hero character. Um, but they basically just confirmed it. Like, oh, so she's a chess player and she's biding her time. She's waiting until the proper moment to strike, and that's not now. Um, and she's taking out everybody that's going to get in her way, even people who might be on her side. Um, I didn't like it, though. I didn't like the way that they did it. I didn't like the flashbacks. I didn't like that they used the flashbacks to introduce a really terrible version of Lionel Luther. Like, he was really bad. And he was there for like five seconds. If they, um, if they didn't say his name, I would have had no idea who he was. I thought for a second, I don't know how many of us have watched Fringe here. I thought he was the main observer for a second. The, oh. the, the, you know, I think his name is October. He's the observer, though, who is most identifiable on the show. I thought and, he was age 47 for a second. Yeah. Possibly. I, I don't know about that. But he just looked so generic and so 
uninteresting to me. Um, like, just give him the hair. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> that's a something mist smoke from uh, did. Flash. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Nimbus. He did look very similar. He, he, yeah. If you squinted and you looked real hard, um, he just had to make the sailboat. He just had to make that weird smile that he does in that episode. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff. Like, why is Wind's shield so hard? The shield that he made for Jimmy. Like, is it made out of vibranium or yeah, whatever the DC America. equivalent is? It's gotta be Captain America's shield. Don't you love Captain America, Carlin? <laughs> I feel like it's like, I mean, uh, we're all against Guardian, I feel like, already. But they just keep on giving me no reason to like Guardian. They're not even trying to win us over. Um, it's just like something that just happens in the background. Like, it's not like anything. Yeah. Yeah. He's bothersome. All, just all kinds of weird stuff, though. Like, like if he... Where did if, Cyborg Superman come from? Again, episode. that's that's a big question too. He just kind of appeared when the Luthers were about, and I'm like, okay, yeah. Um, no, like if there was an episode without Guardian in at all or Jimmy Olsen, no one would notice. Yeah. Like it would just be like, huh, that was a very well put together episode. There was no thing that was really slow. And yeah, and while we're on it, why was like you mentioned earlier? Why why is Cyborg Superman of all people her friend? <laughs> Like, I don't know. It's so weird. I don't. Like, I, it makes no episode. sense. Who, it, wait, so wait. many weird things. Cyborg what Superman and William Luther. Or do you mean? Do you mean uh, Metallo? Because all of a sudden, Metallo like cares about the cause, which was really weird. Like Metallo's thing was that he was a hired gun before. Oh well, yeah. Like he didn't care. <laughs> he didn't care about aliens destroying the earth. Suddenly. <laughs> He's like a nationalist. He's like a white nationalist against aliens. Like, where the hell did that come from? It made He's no sense. He's all up with those trash doves right now. Yeah. Um. Ugh. Okay, ugh, I just ugh, have to ask ugh. this. Is he really dead? Probably not. Yeah, probably. Like, unless, unless he, like, Because last got... time I was sure, for sure he was dead, and then we were like, no, you're wrong. Get I out. mean... Alan, Alan, it's a nuclear explosion, and I don't want to. I don't want to take the time to explain nuclear explosions. Um, but I feel like he's dead. I feel like he's dead. Um, unless we find out like a speedster came in and like saved him, which might be a possibility, but I highly doubt it. Um. Yeah, I don't think he's alive. I think he's gone. But we still have Metallo 2 out there somewhere. So, and he was only in it for, like, an episode. So they can just recast Metallo 2 um, with some other guy. <laughs> and say it's the second Metallo. And then, boom, new Metallo. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is a weird episode for me. I... I liked some of it. I didn't like other parts of it. I I thought it really didn't come together, though, in the end. Really? And it, again, like, so many logic jumps. Um, I don't know. Like, my favorite part of the episode was Snapper. Um, Snapper Carr really made a good impression in this episode. Yeah, I don't know. Any, any, other, any other thoughts, y'all? Uh, uh, not really. It, All right. Um, it Supergirl has this, had this bizarre drop in quality that I just I just don't feel okay with. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is still better than season one Supergirl. Oh, so no, no, it's still better, but I'm just saying, like, it, it's just I don't know how I feel about it. Like, it had a nice beat to it, and I just kind of just kind of lost that. Yeah, it's just. It's very bizarre. I just don't know I, my feelings on it at all. Mm. All right. I think I'm done on Supergirl. I don't think we have any news unless somebody has something that Not is really... really... We could talk about the WB stuff with the Batman. But... Um, yeah, I'm not. I don't want to be depressed. Yeah, I'm tired. 
I'm tired of talking about the the WB movies and all that. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't got anything. So I think uh, I think we're good. Let's uh, let's do some uh, some plugs. So, yeah. so you can you can follow me on Twitter at Uh You can, as I mentioned earlier, I am on the Haro writing about video games and the video game editor. Um, Join the Facebook group. Just type in Fan Zone into the Facebook group. Uh, into the search it. bar, not into a Facebook group. You won't get anything yeah, you, there. You know what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Anyone else want to play anything? Um, so you can find me and my my dumb thoughts on Twitter at A.A. Haro. Um, you can go to the Haro, as Hunter just said, uh, you get my writing and the writing of, uh, I think, ten other people now. Um, so, yeah, go there. Alan is also there. Um, Did we recruit someone else to the cause? Not Chris. He's, he's banned for life now. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. We might recruit other people in the future. I mean, maybe um, Connor. You never know. But, um, yeah, that's all. those are all my, my plugs. Alan, I uh, yeah uh, I I'm yeah whatever I don't care. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, All right. Very I, non-committal. I, I... Um. Yeah. But you can find this pod if you're listening to this podcast as a one-off somewhere. Uh, you can find us uh, uh at the Phantom Zone uh podcast uh dot wordpress dot com. There you can find our uh, RSS feed, our iTunes feed. All fun uh, stuff. Yeah. YouTube. Uh, I don't know if we're on Roku, but Roku. Um, you know, wherever you can find, find podcasts, we are there. Um, are we, we on the SoundClouds? Have... Huh? Are we on the SoundCloud? Um, no, we're not. No. Okay, no, we need to get on that, that costs... SoundCloud. No, no, that costs money. Um, no, it so... It's free. It. No, no. In it's order to have good SoundCloud service, you need to get money. Yeah. Mm. It, it, yeah. It would limit us to like six episodes. So. We do need to get on Switcher. Stitcher. Stitcher. No, yeah. they don't. No, they put ads on your stuff without paying you. So, uh, oh, fuck, fuck Stitcher. Yeah. yeah, fuck, fuck oh. Stitcher. <laughs> Saying this officially. Um, yeah. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to plug. Um, on Wednesday nights, we I do a D&D stream with Thanks for Even Gaming. Fucking and nerd. I, Starting to show up there more often. Fucking nerd. So, well, Says the guy who play. likes Alex G. So go up to subscribe them on Twitch. Streaming Dungeons and Dragons and liking a movie adaptation of a comic book is something completely It's really different. bad. It's the same thing. It's the yeah, exact it's the same, same thing. thing. Some people like Batman vs. Superman. I like Alex um, G. I'm not going to tell them that they're wrong, but I will say I disagree strongly. Um. So yeah, I feel like we're yeah. I think we're good. Uh, uh, we forgot bye. to wait. No, bye. we forgot to credit Eric. Oh yeah, Eric Dudley does our theme song, which we'll be playing here shortly. Wait, we Yay. have a theme song. Yes, we have a theme song. <laughs> Since when? We've had one for years. How well, not wait, years. What, we've been doing this for years? Of anything that on this show. Well, I feel like I've been doing it for years after this episode. Um, I've been trapped here for years. <laughs> that would explain the beard. stuck in a Doctor Strange time loop. <laughs> Your mom have come to bargain. Wait, no, that wasn't the Doctor Who, the Doctor Strange special. Wait, Doctor Who special? What? Now we're doing this? We're what? still in the Doctor Strange special, guys. This is the Doctor Strange special. I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> we've been, we're lost in a time loop. Help us. Let's end this podcast for going insane. Bye.